What is up everyone and welcome to Sly Spy Gaming. The Saints Row update that the developers have been talking about for the past month is finally here and as usual in this video, I'll be breaking it down bit by bit for you, but be forewarned, this one is huge. If you are looking for a specific section as always, feel free to head down to those timestamps in the description below to find what you're looking for. I've also added the link to the official patch notes in the description below if you want to check those out as well. So to give you an idea of how massive this update actually is, it includes over 200 bug fixes. The main focus of these fixes according to the developers is stability and co-op gameplay issues. However, they have also sprinkled in some new features into this update as well. So let's dive into these fixes starting with the combat improvements. The developers started their massive patch notes by outlining the various combat improvements and stating that combat should now feel more balanced and engaging and winning fights should feel more rewarding. They go on to point out the several changes that they have made to the system, such as improvements to aiming, they've rebalanced the combat by drastically reducing the damage of enemy shotguns and SMGs across the board, and this should make several key encounters fair and much more fun. They've rebalanced most of the weapon ultimate challenges, simplifying them to make progression feel even more rewarding. Weapon ultimates should now unlock automatically when the challenge is complete. They've tweaked the time given to interrupt enemy call-ins for support, and they've tweaked the scaling of notoriety to allow players to react to and escape the notoriety loop even easier. Lastly, they've reduced the frequency of stylized deaths on the easiest difficulty. I mean, even these improvements here, that is a lot of improvements just to the combat system alone. But to be fair, the combat system or the bugs with the system was one of the bigger knocks on the game, with many complaining that it seemed almost lifeless. While I personally didn't have many issues with the fixes that they made here, I did have some issues with the aiming system, feeling a bit off from the get-go. But this is just the tip of the iceberg, and I hope that you are all strapped in because we are moving on to garage and vehicle improvements. The motorheads of the Saints Row community rejoice as this update comes with a plethora of new improvements to not only vehicles themselves, but the garage system as well. One of the seemingly bigger improvements I have seen in this update is that seven new garage locations have been placed throughout the world and they unlock during the Chop Shop Criminal Empire missions with JR. That is a huge one as I love the car customization system in the game. My only issue is that I didn't want to take a car all the way from the Badlands to JR shop due to the inconvenience of the trip. That's not all they have done to the garage system. They've also improved garage vehicle list management, allowing players to favorite, like, and view recent vehicles in the garage. They freed up over 50 vehicle customization save slots, and I believe that they have done this by introducing vehicle templates. The templates will act as rewards instead of saving the vehicle to the player's garage automatically. Again, this will allow players to retain more custom vehicle save slots. They expanded the vehicle delivery options with a full garage list including favorites, liked, and recent vehicles. And lastly, they've added new drop-off location visual telegraphs to the HQ and new chop shop locations for driven and flown vehicles. As I said before, I didn't collect too many vehicles due to the minimal locations of the garages around the map, but I did see tons of people complain about not having enough vehicle slots, so it looks like both of these major issues have been fixed. On top of the vehicles, they've also made significant improvements to the open world gameplay and criminal ventures. To start, they've introduced new progression tiers to district completion. Players will now see saints roaming the streets when they have completed the criminal venture and the district threats. At 100% completion, even more saints will spawn. Something like this should give you the impact of actually taking over the streets of Santo Eliso. So an improvement like this will give players that sort of feeling of seeing more of your saints gang roaming the streets. They've also significantly reduced the number of bright future disposals required to complete the venture. So if you guys have played the bright future disposals criminal venture, you will know that there are quite a lot of disposals that you have to do. With this significant reduction, it should make the venture much more appealing. They've also made Chop Shop Vehicle Delivery now acceptable at all new locations. 
So the seven new garage locations that we mentioned earlier in the video is what they are talking about here. So all the chop shop vehicle deliveries will now be able to be dropped off at those new locations. They've also improved the discovery radius on some collectibles, making them easier to find while exploring the city. If you're looking for that 100% completion, this will definitely help that out. As I have completed the game and discovered everything that there is to discover, this one was really difficult for me, especially in Monte Vista, the Badlands, some of those bigger areas with much more space where you don't really know exactly where you're going to be able to find those discovery locations. Now we'll move on to the UX and other improvements that they've made. So they have added new voice pitch sliders during customization that will permit players to use a huge new range of voices. Another improvement that they made is that players will now have the ability to equip weapons at HQ without having to walk outside of the HQ. They've also improved subtitle timing to better match what's happening on screen. They've implemented support for PlayStation 5's haptic triggers for weapons, and they've improved color swatch options to include a truer black and a wider selection of grays. So with some of those major improvements out of the way, we now move on to the huge number of fixes that they've made to co-op and stability. This list is definitely huge. So this is one that you're going to want to strap in with, and I'm going to try to get through it very quickly for you guys, just to list all of the different fixes that they have actually implemented in this update. So let's start off with the fix list for co-op. So they have fixed an issue where sometimes the player could lose connection and disconnect during co-op. They fixed instances of the player's icon disappearing from the minimap. They fixed an instance of animations of the partner player not playing for a player hit with a thrust buster while having the camera mode on. They fixed co-op interactions with the Atchis side hustle which could lead to overwriting or canceling the first interaction and displaying the objective only for the second player to interact with. Credit is now properly given on the Kill the Collective challenge if the Litterbug wanted target is killed in co-op. It fixed an instance of the host not being able to build a criminal venture when the partner player is waiting to join the active session. The client player can now properly see tutorial prompts when advancing through the first effing day in co-op. They fixed an instance of players not properly spawning on the hover bike after the first cinematic in the Great Train Robbery. They fixed issues with the boat previews for the partner player after using the boat deck menu at the HQ. They fixed an issue where the host could lose menu functionality if the client left during a mission after the host selected exit to main menu. Vehicle delivery service now properly delivers cars customized if they were saved in the garage by the player in co-op. They fixed an issue with turrets shaking while the partner player is driving the vehicle. They fixed the loading issue while the host is on the waiting for the partner to join screen. They fixed the case where characters could fall under the map in the Forge co-op mission. They adjusted shipment car spawn time to avoid triggering mission failures in the Fast and the Foodius mission. They fixed the case of mission information not resuming after players revived during the morning commute. They fixed an issue where the host could fall through the ground in the after party mission. They fixed the case where the helicopter may not arrive while the host player is in the APC turret during the first F and day mission. Dress an issue where the host could advance without completing character customization if the client chose to exit during the first F and day mission. They fixed a bug that limited the player's ammunition if the host entered the weapon cache during observed and report. They fixed an issue where the host would remain on the waiting screen after the partner player had chosen to cancel the join new criminal venture reveal cutscene. They fixed the case where the player icon would disappear from maps when the host exits and re-enters the garage. They fixed an instance of KAKTS radio banners appearing when the partner player joins a co-op session. They addressed cases of arms disappearing on partner player bosses. They fixed a bug where players were unable to use skills if one of them had the riot shield equipped. They fixed an occasional crash when both players exit to the main menu. They fixed a bug where the partner player could lose functionality within the main menu after selecting DLC content. They resolved an issue where the partner player sees the world loading while waiting to join a co-op session. And they fixed a couple of cases where the partner player could see the content unlocked pop up twice during the co-op session. They fixed a case where improper messages could display between the host and partner player when unlocking DLC. Whew. So those are all of the co-op fixes that they have implemented in this update. So as I said, that is a lot. And for those players who had a lot of issues, especially with the co-op, this update will definitely help you guys out. I know me personally, 
I really like playing with my friends and having so many issues of stability while playing can get extremely frustrating. Needless to say, the developers know this as well. And this is something that they really focus on fixing in this massive update. And you can see by all of the different fixes that they implement. I literally couldn't even go through each one and tell you which ones that I had and which ones that I did not have just because of all of the different fixes that they have made on here. So now I will move on to an equally long list of stability and crash fixes that were implemented in the update. Again, I will just be knocking these off instead of going through each and every one and kind of explaining them in further detail. If you do want to hear more about what these actually mean or what these could mean, feel free to leave a comment below and we can discuss it in further detail there. So in terms of the stability and crash fixes that they have implemented, they have fixed an issue where the players could crash while being idle at the HQ. They reduced instances of accidental player deaths in observe and report in both co-op and single player sessions. They fixed a case where the train could derail after completing the Mayhem tutorial. They fixed instances of infinite loading screens during conversation with the Chalupa Cabra manager. They fixed a crash during co-op when restarting from checkpoint in the Take Me to Church mission. They fixed an instance where players could encounter an infinite loading screen when restarting from checkpoint during the Making Rent mission. They fixed a crash when loading the choplifting side hustle. They fixed a crash that could occur during prolonged fighting at high notoriety. They fixed an infinite loading screen that could occur after the Clear the Lead Truck objective in Observe and Report. They fixed a crash that could occur in co-op if both players chose to exit to main menu during the first customization screen in the opening scene. They fixed the crash that could occur for the host player during co-op while near the HQ. They fixed a case where the Atcha instance would not complete after defeating all enemies. They fixed a soft crash that could occur in co-op when two players were using the Style app during the Arm Yourself objective in the Corporate Retreat mission. They fixed instances of infinite loads while using the Style app during a mission. They fixed a bug where an infinite loading screen could occur after jumping off the train when the final cutscene is triggered in the Great Train Robbery. Resolved a soft crash when the container fails to count for the objective during the chopper activity. They fixed the case of a soft crash from building the Woozers Repo Criminal Venture. They address an issue where the player could become soft crashed when the prank tutorial appears when the content unlock interface is displayed. They fixed an instance where the player could crash while in Santo Aleso while on the high frame rate setting. They fixed an instance where the player could soft crash when pausing the game. So those are all the major stability and crash fixes that they have made in this update. Again, this is huge on the part of the developers. Instead of focusing on new content, what they're focused on is giving players a more polished and refined version of the core game of Saints Row. Again, it is surprising to say that this is just a free update that they are adding to the game. And they're even implementing some new features for free for a lot of people. So I'm happy to see that Volition is actually taking this into account for players and fixing a lot of the core issues that they have seen and that other players have seen. Now we'll be moving on to the, some of the mission fixes that they have made in this update as well. Again, this is a very, very long list, so I'll just kind of be rattling through them. If you guys do have questions, as always, let me know in the comments below and we can talk about it in further detail. So in terms of missions, they have fixed the case where Nina could fail to drive to the graveyard in the Breaking Ground mission. They fixed an issue where the Empire map would be invisible with empty lot circles in Breaking Ground. They fixed a soft crash that could occur after placing Bright Future Disposal in Breaking Ground. They fixed a lighting transition at the beginning of networking. They fixed a case where the player could skip the conversation with ally NPCs in After Party. They fixed a bug where the player was unable to restart from checkpoint or restart mission after talking to Kevin. They fixed an issue with Sergio getting up after being hit by El Lanzador in the Great Train Robbery. They fixed a soft crash that could occur during the Great Train Robbery after killing all the enemies in the first car. They fixed the case of martial units not attacking the player and taking me to church. They fixed an instance of loss of control after attacking the Nduwale with a Thrustbuster or C4. They now properly grant the Dock Ketchum Horse Collectible after aggressive recruiting. They fixed a bug where the boat would suddenly stop during going overboard. They fixed the case where the Nawale would prevent the player from entering a vehicle in the frontier. They fixed a soft crash where enemies would disappear if the player moved far enough away from the mission area in a piece of the action. They fixed multiple failure screens that could occur when the player is killed during Be Your Own Boss. They fixed ammo being taken away from the KI-1 Cobra Pistol after completing Make and Rent. 
fixed cases of frozen pedestrians during Donut Run. It fixed the jukebox audio repeating itself in idle threats. It fixed area warning display radius in non-compete clause. It fixed animation issues with Gabriel in the Nina's car mission. It fixed a mission progression issue in interrogate Gabriel objective during the Nina's car mission. It fixed an invulnerable NPC in the forge mission. It fixed an infinite loading screen that could occur when opening the community sharing menu during the fast and Methodius mission during dialogue. It fixed a soft crash where Kevin could not be revived after reaching the second drive through window in the Fast and the Foodiest. They fixed an issue where good cop, bad cop would fail to regress if the last container was hit by a helicopter. They resolved an issue where the player falls after boarding or completing a mission in an airborne vehicle. So again, there is a long list of all of the different mission fixes that they have implemented in this update. And again, it kind of goes back to that core value of them just trying to really give players that refined experience and making them happier with the core game. Obviously, missions are a big part of the core game, and so fixing issues with that will go a long way for players. We will now move on to the UI issues that have been fixed in this update. And I know that this was really important to a lot of players, as a lot of people had complained about some of the UI issues that they faced. We'll start with that they fixed some incorrectly named items on the console versions. They fixed instances of remap controls not appearing correctly on the button mapping. They fixed the disappearing on off toggle for crew customization when restoring defaults. The custom color button now functions correctly while in contrast settings. Remove some instances of placeholder text in the brightness options menu. Correctly added background color to some text boxes. Correctly spawning the objective timer UI while in laundromat for players who completed insurance fraud first. It fixed the player being prevented from opening the skills or perks menu while inside of a vehicle. I will go into a little bit more depth with this one as this is one that I personally have experienced a lot. I just thought that it was kind of a decision on the developer's part not to do that, but apparently this was a bug and I'm glad it was fixed because this was a bit annoying. They fixed some instances of the upgrade cost not displaying on the friendly fire menu. It fixed instances of the back button not being available. It resolved an issue which caused players to be unable to select any options on the main menu. It re-centered the XP gain icon. It fixed an instance of the roof riding tutorial popping up if the player had been taken down while riding the roof of a vehicle. It fixed an issue with the weapon wheel displaying the incorrect weapon when quick swap. So those are all of the UI issues that were fixed in this update or added in this update. Now I can start kind of getting a little bit more in depth with some of these other ones, um, such as vehicles, ambient life, animation. There are definitely some big ones in here. Uh, some that I have experienced and I know for a fact a lot of other players have experienced. So in terms of vehicles, they have fixed the logo displayed for the Dreadnought. They fixed an issue with upgrade kits being lost after selecting vehicle presets in the garage. They adjusted high glare intensity. They added controller rumble while drifting in heavy vehicles. Again, this kind of circles all back to that player experience thing that we talked about earlier giving players the experience and especially when driving things like a monster truck or some giant vehicles just really feeling that and getting players more immersed into the experience. It's just cool that the developers are taking that into account when making updates, fixes, and new features. They fixed the case where the driver of a hijacked vehicle would not properly ragdoll when being kicked out of a vehicle. They fixed the case of the player respawning as a ragdoll after being killed in a vehicle. They fixed an issue that caused the yacht to behave erratically when picked up with a tow cable. And lastly, they fix cases of vehicle doors inflicting damage to the player when exiting certain cars. This is one that I have definitely experienced and I have seen a lot of other videos where people have experienced it as well. It's kind of funny just getting out of the car and getting hit by your door and kind of falling down, but it can be a little bit annoying. And I've actually died once just because of this issue. So. It's good to see that this was actually an issue and that they have fixed this. Moving on to the changes that they made with the ambient life around Santo Eleso. So they fixed issues where factions, police, saints, NPCs, and vehicles would sometimes fail to spawn after extended gameplay sessions. Oh my gosh, I had this so many times that it was frustrating. This was one of the, probably one of the biggest bugs that I really experienced in this game at least and oh man. Trying to complete insurance fraud while everyone and every vehicle is completely gone is obviously very, very, very difficult. I believe this is an issue that has just affected the Saints Row franchise for 
years. I remember this happening in Saints Row, the original Saints Row in 2006, where again, you'd be playing insurance fraud and every vehicle would just completely disappear. They've also fixed instances of police and faction spawns not occurring properly within certain world districts. We'll now move on to the animation section, and I know that this was big for a lot of people. I did have some issues with animation, and I wish that they would have been addressed in this update, but it sounds like the developers have plans in the future to continue to make updates and fixes to certain bugs that players are experiencing. So in terms of animations, they have fixed the bug where the NPCs would perform their sit animation after being killed while exiting a vehicle. They adjusted scripted NPCs so they could take combat actions. They adjusted the sync of friend NPC revive animations, and they fixed the case where the Pineapple Express skill would kill enemies instantly or play in the wrong direction. So in terms of the animations that I wish that they would have fixed, there were some skills that would just simply not work. Uh, not exactly sure why that was, and I would have liked to see that that was at least addressed in this update, but the fact that they are fixing cases where some skills aren't working correctly or working as intended is a really big step, and I'm hoping that we get to see that later on in the future where they're making more fixes to some more of those skills. We'll now move on to the audio fixes that they have made, and there aren't a ton, so I'll kind of mix that in with some of the camera fixes that they've also made in this update. So they've adjusted the cooldown timer for certain challenge lines. They fixed the case where music from the Bright Future Disposal's Criminal Venture would sometimes keep playing. And they fixed certain cases of vehicles having their radios turned off by default. Now the radios being turned off issue for me did not seem like an issue. Um, I personally like getting into vehicles and not having the radio turned on. What I would like to see is that this is an option for players because you do have people who are creating content. So making an option where radios are turned off by default would really go a long way. In terms of the camera fixes that they have made, they fixed the case where the camera could clip at the end of the Unto the Breach mission. They fixed cases where the camera could clip through props and observe and report. They fixed an issue where the camera occasionally would get stuck under the map while drifting into garages at high speed. They smoothed camera movement when entering certain interiors, and they fixed inconsistent camera acceleration when moving the camera back and forth. So I really didn't experience any of the camera bugs that they addressed in this update. However, there was a bug where I would get into vehicles and it would just super hyper eight times zoom into random things. I don't really know what that was and if that's been fixed. That was an issue that I had had in the past. We'll move on now to some of the localization and visual and customization fixes that they have made. So in terms of localization, they have fixed several instances of unsupported characters being displayed, and they fixed missing translations in the Korean language. In terms of visual and customization changes, they have fixed the bug where the lower forearms could disappear when wearing some jackets, they fixed an instance of shadows flickering while rotating the boss in the wardrobe, they fixed a bug that did not properly allow the players to preview helmets while having a hat equipped. They fixed instances of the player character appearing next to the car upon entering garages. They fixed an instance of missing skin textures with specific gloves equipped. They resolved instances of hairstyles clipping into headbands. And the chicken Ned outfit coloring options are now displayed correctly. So again, I didn't really experience many of these visual bugs that they listed here. One of the big visual bugs that I personally experience is with my boss, he has a prosthetic arm, and a lot of times wearing a jacket, kind of the elbow part would clip through a lot of the jackets most of the time. And that doesn't seem like an issue that they fixed in here, but a lot of these fixes kind of fall into that same category of kind of fixing clipping issues and kind of missing textures, things like that. So I'm hoping in future updates, we do get to see some of those fixes for some of those bosses who do wear prosthetics out there. Next, we'll move on to the weapon fixes and weapon implementations that they have made in the bright future update. So, they fixed an issue of the MD1-101 multi-launcher's signature ability not unlocking after completing the weapon challenge. Now, this is an issue that I had faced many a time, and I don't know why I didn't just stop trying to go for it. Me, I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep doing it, and over and over, it disappointed me. But it is good to see that this has actually been fixed now, and so maybe I'll go in and give it another shot. They've made it to where multi-kills will now also increment the counter for the AS3 Ultimax weapon challenge. They fixed a case where the player could lose functionality while dodging with an empty magazine. They fixed the bug where the minigun ceased to work after overheating. They adjusted the damage on the sawed-off shotgun. 
It fixed the bug where the player could lose functionality if they were interrupted during a reload. And the Panteros Thumper is now available while vehicle surfing. Moving on to the final set of fixes that they have made, and these are fixes and implementations that they have made to the world of Saints Row. Santo Eleso. Alright, so they have fixed a case of ambient spawns, sometimes blocking access to the garage location in Lakeshore North. They fixed instances of missing textures in the eastern edge of the Rojas Desert North and South. They fixed holes seen from a distance at the tops of certain buildings in the Financial District. And lastly, they fixed cases of the dust storm effect playing while inside of shops. Kind of the last little note that they do have here is that they do have many more updates, new features, and fixes planned, and it sounds like they'll have more news to share on that in the next few weeks. I'm guessing sometime between Thanksgiving and the other holidays is when they plan to kind of give us a little bit more information or kind of a roadmap on their updates, new features, and some of the things that they promised, such as the map expansions and upcoming DLC as well. And that is about it for this video guys if you did enjoy this video make sure as always to hit that like and subscribe button just to stay up to date in all of your favorite games until next time everybody this is sliced by gaming signing out